Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Alice is assisting with the projection. Alice is assisting, okay. Thank you very much. Yes, this is an, uh, the first proof of cooperation is that in uh, some country, I don't know where, uh, someone is uh, presenting you my slides. So thank you very much, uh, Alice, for doing that. Uh, my name is Ellen van Selm. I'm the mayor of uh, Opsterland municipality in the Netherlands. Um, today is a public holiday as well, as Enrique was uh, uh, explaining. Uh, we have beautiful weather here. This, uh, in spite of the COVID crisis, we see a lot of people outside cycling and enjoying the nice uh, weather here. Uh, I will explain in this presentation a bit how we are coping with the COVID crisis, especially how uh, we as a rural uh, municipality uh, um, uh, connect to the, uh, to the current uh, pandemic and also how we cooperate with the cities. I hope my uh, internet connection is stable enough because that's one of the uh, uh, takeaways I want to make in the end that it is uh, necessary to have a stable internet connection. And that's not always the case. Uh, I thank you very much for the presentation. I feel very honored and, uh, to meet you and connect with you around the globe in this uh, uh, way, uh, in spite of or maybe thanks to the COVID crisis. Uh, I used to work in my former career in the international cooperation, uh, for example, in uh, Pakistan, in the social forestry sector, and the participatory approaches that we use there is really a big advantage in my work here today in the Netherlands as a mayor. Uh, can you please give the, yeah, this is the, a map of the Netherlands. You see, I want to indicate where we are. This is the map of the Netherlands. Uh, Opsterland is my municipality, is in the north of the Netherlands, in the province of Friesland. And Friesland is a mainly rural area. The main sectors are tourism and agriculture. And um, as you can see, the um, uh, Opsterland is a municipality with about 30,000 inhabitants. Uh, we're divided into 16, one, six villages. And we have uh, quite, for this uh, amount of inhabitants, we have quite a large territory. Uh, uh, we used to have one of the, uh, we used to be one of the largest communities uh, in uh, territory wise. Uh, that um, um, makes that we have a lot of uh, space here. And, all, and, and uh, that's also one of the key issues in my contribution today. Uh, in the Netherlands, we have a network that's called P10. And that uh, is a network of the 22 largest rural uh, uh, municipalities. And I am chairing this network, network and these communities are located uh, uh, in, in the periphery of our country, uh, large um, uh, territories, uh, uh, municipality with only villages and no urban uh, um, centers. Uh, this P10 network aims at uh, developing and sharing knowledge and on the one hand and on the other hand um, uh, lobbying and uh, uh, for that reason I'm also a board member of the, uh, the Dutch mun uh, network of municipalities and there I met in that uh, uh, UN Habitat in Durban last year. Uh, if you can give the next uh, slide, please. Yeah, these are, these are the numbers of the COVID uh, uh, crisis at the moment. If you can see, uh, Netherlands is relatively uh, heavily affected by the crisis. Uh, we have about uh, on a, on a total of 17 million inhabitants in Netherlands as a whole. We have four, uh, around 44,000 confirmed cases. That means that these people were tested and confirmed, confirmed with a COVID-19 virus. Um, uh, not everybody can have uh, a test. So um, uh, this is an under-representation. Uh, we uh, expect that the total uh, of, uh, of positively uh, tested, uh, positive um, uh, people with uh, COVID virus is much higher. There are uh, 11,500 in hospitals these are not all, the people are not, all of them are in, um, in the intensive care. 
but these are the, the, um, these are the complete numbers. And in total, more than 5,500 5, 5, people died of COVID. And these are um, last week's uh, figures, as you can see. In Friesland, however, my province, we have a lot less um, uh, patients. We have, as you can see, 577 in Friesland and in my community, in my municipality, 23. We had the first confirmed um, a patient with COVID in my municipality. So we had a lot of uh, uh, press attention, the first in my province, I have to say. And that means that we are very much aware uh, of the, um, uh, the risks and impact of COVID. And we have a very deliberate uh, uh, policy how to deal with it. Uh, on the one hand, we do, we do not have a lot of uh, patients, but the uh, impact on social and economic life is much bigger because of the restrictions related to the uh, lockdown we have here. And we call it, our prime minister introduced the term an uh, intelligent lockdown, and I will come back to it later. In the table below, you can see that the peak of the hospitalized people was end of March, beginning of April. So now it is a quite stable um, uh, period with, less, with much less uh, infections. The next, please. Yeah. The, about the governance structure dealing with COVID in the Netherlands is at national level is uh, our measures are issued based on technical information analysis and expertise from our highly qualified healthcare institutions and that's um, I like to stress that because it's not uh, the, these are not uh, polit uh, political decisions but but uh, our prime minister uh, says once and again that it's all based on facts and figures and um, uh, advisors from uh, the, uh, from expertise uh, centers. Um, at this level, there is decided to implement a so-called intelligent lockdown on March the 12th. And this intelligent, lock, intel, intelligent lockdown means that uh, uh, inhabitants are expected to think for themselves what can be done and what, with, what can't be uh, done. However, there are a lot of measures issued, and I will come back to this, this um, uh, uh, when we see the national approach. Uh, its aim is to, um, uh, to protect vulnerable groups and make sure the healthcare system can cope. That means a flat in the curve, which is a worldwide uh, 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 slogan at the moment, is also used here that we... Uh, do want to, uh, to have our um, uh, health system uh, 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 um, prepared to, ha to help all the uh, patients. Few exam uh, on the regional level, yes, I was in, at the top of this slide, we have uh, so-called security regions. And these security regions are normally organizing emergency service, like uh, uh, fire brigades, etc. And now, at the moment, they act as supervisory bodies of the implementation of the national policy. On local level, there we are responsible for supervision and enforcement of the measures. A few examples of those national measures are, and I, I'm sure you know them, uh, personal hygiene measures, social distancing, one and a half meter, schools are closed, working at home, no use of public transport unless necessary, and um, uh, exactly in this time, when, when you see the, uh, the curve of our, the peak of the, uh, the hospitalized people are already weeks behind us, we are, um, um, we are changing the policy and downgrading some measures. For example, some schools reopen now for uh, children under 12. Restaurants and cafes will open in June with a maximum of 30 visitors. Uh, contact professions such as hairdressers, etc., they start working again. And now we, uh, uh, we hear that at national level to monitor all these data and the consequences of gradually opening up the society, that we are developing a kind of national corona dashboard 
and uh, you know you might know early warning systems and we like to introduce an, an kind of early warning system to uh, monitor uh, um, as close as possible the impact of loosening or tightening uh, uh, restrictions um, Okay, this is what I, uh, the regional and local approach is, is in my province, we have a weekly meeting of our, all the mayors in this province, which are uh, 16, uh, to see if all the, uh, to monitor the COVID cases and see if all the measures uh, are, uh, how the compliance is and if we have to uh, change our policy. Okay, this is about governance. Uh, if you can go to the next one about urban-rural linkages, the topic of these webinar sessions. Um, we can say that uh, in the Netherlands and in Europe and worldwide, we have a joint focus on keeping the virus and the economic consequences under control. In our country, we, uh, uh, there is an appeal on solidarity, and uh, uh, that's why you can, uh, so that we protect vulnerable vulnerable groups together. Um, I explain we have regional differences in the extent we are affected by the virus. In my rural province, we have more impact of the intelligent lockdown than that we have actual confirmed cases. So we do have large economic consequences, inhabitants losing jobs, uh, people uh, lose feeling of meaningful lives, loss of so social structures, and all those uh, uh, consequences we see. Uh, so that's um, uh, one of the, the, the differences in what um, my, the previous uh, uh, introducer said, um, uh, less densely, uh, um, areas with less, less densely populated. We see the same here, that we, uh, uh, solidarity is asked, but we have uh, so much space that it's very easy to keep the uh, social distancing. As the crowd management, this is my first point, is very different than in a rural area. Uh, we, uh, it's uh, easier for us than in cities. Um, The second point is that uh, in uh, my municipality, there's a reduction of compliance with all the restrictions because the sense of urgency is becoming less. And that's uh, something I as a mayor has to, uh, has to observe and also see what we can do in terms of uh, measurements. The uh, last point is uh, the impact of the agriculture sector. In uh, uh, my preparation, um, uh, we had uh, some context about that. We can't say anything about the agricultural sector at the moment. Uh, as far as I can see, the export is not uh, very much affected uh, yet, but I'm sure on the long run that will, be an, uh, will help to uh, improve the focus on uh, local circular economy, also in the agricultural sector. On the other hand, uh, the Netherlands is well known for its eff efficient way of uh, pr production. And uh, we will see in the long run what uh, results, um, uh, what will be the result of this uh, uh, crisis. Um, the access to food and other resources is not affected in our uh, uh, country, uh, uh, not here in the countryside, but also not in the cities. Although the number of people that lost their jobs and have to rely on charity food supply, soup kitchens, food bank, increases quickly and uh, in has at the moment enormous numbers, uh, which is uh, really a novum at this time in uh, the Western world. I'd like to conclude, oh, I have this uh, example in Obsterland, one-way routing. This is something in public space that it is e for us very easily to ask people to cooperate with us, to say the, uh, the chance of uh, uh, infection is much less if you, if you go hiking you do it uh, in a one-way uh, matter. And if you think yourself how you can walk, for example, walk, walk clockwise, then, we, um, then it's uh, easier to avoid uh, uh, other people and to avoid infections. And that helps a lot. And this was a kind of an, um, a no from that I was on the national television with, and uh, it works here in, on the, in our uh, national parks. And it's not, uh, uh, 
to be enforced because that's impossible, but on the other hand, people do that themselves. So I want to conclude uh, the last with my last slide. What did we learn so far on uh, rural and um, uh, on our rural, in our rural uh, municipality? Uh, we see that uh, the implementation of the COVID measures is based on trust that our citizens will comply because they see our communal interest, they are common interest. This is, however, our regular attitude, also because we simply don't have sufficient enforcement capacity and not enough police officers. So we can't enforce anyone uh, who's, who's uh, walking outside. So what we hope and what we ask from our inhabitants is that they comply themselves and because they also see the reason and uh, uh, why we have to be in this lockdown. Uh, what's also remar remarkable in this uh, um, case is that, is that the government at all levels emphasize and praise the majority of people that comply. So this is a um, very positive uh, attitude of our uh, politicians on all levels. We uh, stress the positive behavior. Uh, I might have to uh, make the remark that uh, a mayor is not a political function in the Netherlands. <laughs> so I'm be beside of the political um, uh, system. Uh, the leadership that we uh, that is shown is more on good practices than on uh, fining and uh, enforcement. Second is also said by the previous uh, introductor that mobility is one of the key uh, problems to be solved. Uh, it should be monitored very carefully because we do want to keep our touristic sector alive, but we cannot have too many visitors when the lockdown comes to an end. And we have seen that in Spain and Italy as well, that the, um, the pull factors of the countryside in times of crisis are enormously, and at the moment we cannot handle it. So uh, the problem we, saw, we, we are discussing at the moment is how to regulate uh, mobility. The third is that um, uh, I'm convinced that the space in our rural areas offers solutions and opportunities when we have to redesign our society, go to the new normal based on social distancing and the one and a half meter economy. Um, uh, most of the time, these big areas and territories are seen as a problem, but I think that at the moment they're more a solution than a problem. The the fourth is, uh, I started my uh, intervention with it as well. Uh, stable and fast internet is a basic condition for the rural area areas playing a role in a new reality of social distancing. Uh, youth and anyone who uh, wants to work or communicate needs uh, internet at the moment. So it's uh, uh, also in the Netherlands, it's uh, speeding up. Uh, because also, uh, also in our country, uh, there are places in my municipality in particular where we have very slow access and uh, bad coverage of internet. And last, this more uh, a, a thing that we are uh, 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 discussing and um, rethinking at the moment, it might be the case that this crisis offers, offers op uh, opportunities for redesigning um, the food chain from the perspective of sustainability, uh, local production and consumption is stimulated. We want to help our entrepreneurs in the villages and our, to also our local farmers. So it might stimulate the circular economy in the long run. Well, that's my contribution. Thank you very much for the moment. And I might come back later to you. Thank you very much.